Whenever you're ready. Okay, so my touchstone is this. It is my Fenty Beauty lip gloss, and I feel like I need to give a little bit of backstory. Um, so when I was 17, I had my first boyfriend ever, and he was like my first love, everything, and then he was moving, and so we broke up. And I got like really depressed and sad, and the way that I turned that around was through makeup. So I would be up at three in the morning, having a pity party and then I'm like why don't I just do something productive creative and so I would play with makeup and in that like four months I got pretty good at it if I do say so myself and I was already a makeup artist but that was when I really started pushing it and started asking people hey let me do your makeup let me add on to my portfolio and that was also around the time that I decided I was going to move here and I was like well I need some way to make money so I went to beauty school and I had saved up to like build my kit and I saved up for these expensive products and it was really the start of me becoming me and the person that I want to be. Um, and now makeup, so that's why this is my touchstone, now makeup is like my heart and soul because it is gotten me so many places it lets me be on sets it's where I met my boyfriend it's where I um it's where I really like can transform myself into someone else and what I do is I usually step away from Sarah and I become who I call Avalon who is this different person who can transform into anybody and so in the mornings when I put on my makeup or my expensive products that took 20,000 years to save for, I'm no longer being Sarah Benson, the girl from a small town where there was nothing who got made fun of and bullied and um, decided to escape. I am Avalon, the person who did escape, the person who did leave and created something out of herself and even though I'm still working on that and still trying to become my full Avalon um, things like this remind me of that every day okay. and quite in the house please hi um, I got this little guy it's a little Power Rangers uh, guy um, I, I came across it a few months ago like after like 20 years or whatever um, the reason it was uh, kind of a touchstone for me is because it uh, reminds me of the time in my life before my parents got divorced and when we uh, had our family together and all that, which is, you know, part of, part of my life that uh, I really miss, obviously. Um, so yeah, I just want to bring it for that and also so I could do this. It's morphin' time! Tyrannosaurus! And um, whenever you're ready. Okay guys, so I'm talking today about my Ray-Ban sunglasses. These sunglasses have done me so good for the past few years. I'm not talking about just keeping the sun out of my eyes, but, um, you know, just everything about them. <laughs> I really like these. Uh, last year I moved here uh, to Orange County from Redding, California because my house burned down. So I had everything I owned in the back of my car, and I used to have a lot of really cool things that I care about, like a lot of material stuff, um, yeah, just like stuff, you know, like little things like, oh, I've had that forever, oh, I've had that forever, and I don't know, it was really freeing being in my car driving down here 10 hours, just not having anything but my clothes in my car, and that's when I realized, I was like, man, like, I have all the memories I have, like, right in here, and I don't know, I don't really have a touchstone, but I really like these sunglasses, so. Yeah. Hold it, and whatever you're ready. So mine's really personal. Um, and hard to talk about. Um, my dad is um, an alcoholic and he passed that down on to me. So um, a few months ago I started going to an AA meetings. So I carried this chip with me. It's a three month sobriety coin and it reminds me how strong I can be um, and I kind of hold it in my wallet, and that's my, um, 
my what's it called? Touchstone. My touchstone. Yeah, that's my touchstone. Um, I have it with me all the time, um, and I kind of look at it because um, I've been through a lot, and um, and and I I blame my dad, but. Um, at the end of the day, I always know that it will, like, I, I can get through it. I've been three months sober, and I have this shiny green coin, and that, that's a long time for me, um, and um, I don't know. It's, yeah. Well, thank you for your courage. And whenever you're ready. My touchstone is this game called Sonic Heroes. Like, I remember playing this when I very first got like, it was like in 2004. And then um, it came with the PS2 bundle. And I remember like hooking up the PlayStation, like my dad hooked it up, then I saw my sister playing it. I remember like, when I saw the game, like just playing as a young age, I was like, this game is one of the, this game goes hard, basically, I remember Playing as like Team Sonic, you know, you have Team Sonic, Team Dark, Team Chaotix, Team Rose, got Sonic and stuff. Like this is probably like the best Sonic game like to ever come out, like ever. And then I still play this game to this day. Like I hook up my PlayStation and play it time to time because the soundtrack for this game was like really good, man. Like I put some of the songs on my playlist. Like I literally <laughs> put it on like while I'm listening to like to my headphones. I put on like Frog Forest sometimes because that soundtrack was like really beautiful and it's like meditation music. And um, my favorite character on here, you know, is Sonic, you know, like, he's like, like, I just liked his movie sets, like he could do tornadoes, like go fast and collect the rings, you know, he was really good, man. Like, the only team I kind of really didn't like on this game was like, see, Team Rose was pretty cool, but like, <laughs> it was like, it was like, <laughs> It was like, the level was like really short and it was pretty like whack. And then like, the worst character to me in this game is his character Omega. Cause like, the way they programmed him, like you're trying to punch an enemy, like he's right in front of you. He'll punch to the side and like go off a cliff and you like lose a life. And it's kind of like, Omega, can you please punch forward? Like Knuckles can punch forward. Hector, Vector can punch forward. And Big can punch forward, how come you can't punch forward? You're, you're a robot. You can scan, you're a robot, you can scan stuff, like, and you can't punch forward. But yeah. And I remember, like, just watching, like, Sonic turn, like, Super Sonic, and he's finally, like, Metal Sonic and stuff. That was pretty cool. Like, this game was, like, probably, like, the best game I ever played. And Shadow the Hedgehog went pretty hard, too. Like, Shadow the Hedgehog, like, I remember seeing the opening of Shadow the Hedgehog, and he freaking, like, drove a bike into, like, this big-ass alien. And he like caused an explosion happening. Shadow got like a gun out of nowhere, like and started shooting like aliens and stuff. That was pretty dope. <laughs> as, like just seeing that as a little kid. But yeah, this game came out in 2003, by the way, and I was born in 2000. So again, I've been playing this game for like a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is uh, this is Haley. <laughs> um, I I don't actually have asthma, but. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, <laughs> I just I I actually got it because I got really sick uh, my freshman year, second semester in college. Um, I had to take some time off school, and I uh, it made me like rethink like majors and like what I'm doing with my life. Uh, Cause I was just I joined a frat and I was just kind of like dicking around and like not doing anything. Um, so getting sick, uh, and you know, not really getting better until, you know, school started. Uh, and I'm still kind of dealing with it. Um, you know, I have some like heart issues and like, so just like, kind of just like, I keep it around just to remind me to like, uh, you know, life short. Hello. So Never this right. is my, uh, touchstone. It's a skull necklace. I got it off a little insect I killed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, um, a lot of stories, a lot of moments in my life that have been life-changing when I wore this. As you can see, I've worn it while it's very worn down. But um, yeah, I went to my first concert with this. I saw the Scorpions. That was really badass. I uh, just remember wearing it every now and then when I would act, like underneath my costumes or whatever sometimes. 
but I remember like sometimes I would like wear it and I'd be like, oh, this is not really who I am, so I was kind of unsure if I wore it or whatever. But like as the years went by and I would start to wear it, I was like, oh, I'm starting to realize like this thing is making me become who I am, justifying my own decisions. So, I mean, I don't know why I'm not wearing it today, <laughs> but maybe I'll put it on later and just see how my life takes its course. And I just live by those rules every day with film and acting. That's why I love them all so much. So, yeah, we. Oui. Thank you. Whenever you're ready. Cool. So this is a guitar strap. Um, it has sentimental value. I would have brought the guitar itself, but it's a little bit too valuable to me. Um, I got that guitar from my guitar teacher before I moved down to Orange County, and he uh, was a really cool guy. He, he gave it to me himself. He, um, it was his guitar. He played concerts with it and stuff, and he taught classes out of college, and he was a really cool guy. His name was Carlos Gonzalez. He was from Spain, and he um, I had lessons from him for about four years, four or five years, and um, uh, this is the strap that came with the guitar. Um, it's nice, it's leather, it's very heavy. I don't always use it when I perform and stuff because it's a little thick, but I always keep it for sentimental value. Yeah, this is uh, my touchstone. I, uh, I got this belt from my grandfather. He came over, I'm Sicilian, he's from, my grandparents are from Sicily, and they came over in the 50s, did the whole New York thing. My mom was born in Brooklyn. And uh, I would, I would skate a lot um, when I was like when I first started. I'd wear like the shoelace belt and stuff. So he would hate when my pants would sag. So he always talked shit to me. <laughs> and like I'd walk around the house. So he uh, was like he came out of nowhere and was just like yeah take this. So he gave it was like his belt that he wore throughout his whole life. And then so I've had it since I've been 13. And so every time I wear this like every day. I haven't got a new belt. I've been everywhere with this thing. Um, so every time I look at this, I just think of like my family back in Ohio and stuff like that, and all the shit that they did for me, and like I stand on the shoulders of those people. So I look at this and just gotta put on for those people because fuck, I mean they do everything for me. So yeah, that's my touchstone. Thank you. Deal. <laughs> it's not the bag. It's what in it that matters. Oh. This is one of the most important things I've ever owned. Not just because it's, oh, look, Star Wars. It's been with me symbolically, like, my whole life. It's, I, I, I refer to it as my compass, in a sense. Uh, whenever I look at this, I look at, like, why I do what I do in terms of filmmaking, in terms of, like, just the way I look at things. It's, you know, it's a symbol of cool laser sword fights. No, but it's, 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 uh, I'm having a hard time thinking of like the words to say about it, but um, every time I think about what I'm doing, where I'm going, I always look back at this and go, this is where it all came from. Uh, Star Wars, the original, was one of the first movies I ever owned. Uh, it was one of the first movies I ever remember like watching. They re-released it in theaters when I was about two or three and I got to watch that on the big screen for the first time and that, that that's never left me the, the second that the old man gives the young man the laser sword is like one of the most important bits and pieces of cinema history and it means a lot to me and now you know I get to hold it take it with me and keep a part of that and a part of the memory of owning and having the, the the saga come with me but it's also um it's also what got me into filmmaking god i love watching the old behind the scenes like videos of them talking about how like they put reflective tape on the end of it and that's how they got the original effect uh so yeah little little bits of uh filmmaking cinema history and it's a damn cool thing to own <laughs>